Hey guys, Ash here again at Flight Sim Reviews, and I just wanted to show you a really neat FSX tweak tool that I came across on the internet if you're not already running custom tweaks to your FSX configuration file. There are a lot of modifications you can make to the FSX configuration file to give you improved performance with the program. FSX has, in itself is a very, very CPU-bound program. Up until that point, we had had a lot of higher clock speed processors come out, and I feel the designers felt like we were going to see four, five, six, seven gigahertz processors in the future that could just crush the calculations that FSX needs to do. Unfortunately, we got a lot more cores, but we haven't gotten a lot more speed. The first system I bought to run FSX was a Pentium 4 at 3.2 gigahertz with hyperthreading. And as you can see today, even the top Intel i7 2600K only turbo boosts under load up to 3.8 so that's not a huge jump from the jumps we had seen prior to 2006. It's a very CPU bound program you can actually run it with old video cards and it runs pretty good it is just totally bound to how much uh, your CPU can crush in calculations. Uh, so anyways let's go ahead and take a look at this tool. It, the website is vinnytubo.com forward slash fsx and I'll go ahead and throw up a link in the description of this video on where you can find this tool. I went ahead and reinstalled the uh, factory CFG default file into my fsx to go ahead and see what this would change. Uh, obviously I have a custom tweaked one that I use personally and I didn't want it to override all the work I'd done. This is a really good idea and a really slick thing that they've done here because uh, as I'm sure you found out when tweaking your CFG file, you've had to dig through hundreds of pages of forums, seeing everybody's opinion, this work, that didn't, or, you know, and then of course it's all different for different people, so this is a really nice one-stop tool. So, first question to ask is how many CPUs, cores, or threads do you have? It says CPUs, but it's asking for how many cores you have. Uh, unless you're using r running a server or multiple CPUs, uh, I don't, you know, that's not that's not the way I would have titled that. But anyways, I have four, and the way you would check that is you go ahead and hit Control Alt Delete, and you would start your Task Manager, and go ahead and bring it up there. And as you can see, I have four cores. If this was a hyper-threaded processor, I'd have eight logical threads. But since it's not, I just have four. This is an AMD Phenom to 965 at four gigahertz. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say 4, so you would just answer however many boxes you have here under CPU. Uh, is it hyper-threaded? Uh, if you have a hyper-threaded Intel processor and you haven't done anything to it, it is hyper-threaded. You can go into BIOS and disable that. Some people get better performance in gaming with it disabled. So, of course, it would be your chip. You would have to look it up and know whether you've changed it or if it came with hyper-threading, etc. Uh, I don't have that feature, so I'm going to say no. I ha I'm overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz. I have a GTX 580, so we're going to say 480 or better. VSync. VSync is something that limits the amount of frames per second your video card draws. Sometimes when you're running really high FPS, you'll notice that the top half and the bottom half of the screen aren't drawing in sync. So it looks you'll actually get what they call screen tearing right in the middle of the screen. It looks like the top and the bottom aren't updating at the same time. It's it really is not immersive when that goes on. So you can cap how many frames the GPU draws to make it so it's not refreshing the screen faster than the screen can keep up. Uh, it will reduce performance in FSX, so we're going to leave that alone since FSX is already a performance hog as it is. You can make a uh, choice between normal and conservative optimization. I'm going to go ahead and do normal. You go ahead and paste this into your clipboard, and that'll point this website to where your config file is so it can read it. So you're going to go ahead and click Browse. Paste this right back in there. Hit Open so it can read it. And then we're going to click here to begin. Again, this was a, just a stock CFG for FSX that I installed here, so I'm sure there'll be a lot of changes. Green messages mean it was already optimized. Blue means uh, the, there were tweaks applied. And red is something either that can't be changed in the CFG file, it's a graphic setting, or something you would want to tinker with on your card or force with your, cur your current video card. Uh, so the first thing, uh, it said that I had frame rate set to unlimited. Great. Yeah, so anyways, that, that obviously wasn't CFG file. Uh, it's in there, but I obviously made that edit. Affinity Mask, it uh, added optimal results for that. It 
changed the buffer pool section. It added high memfix. High memfix is a uh, problem with FSX running out of memory and it'll crash, etc. It fixes a lot of problems once you insert that into the config file. Uh, it turned up the shader, shadows removed, uh, changed the texture max load, bloom effects disabled. It just went through FSX and essentially disabled the performance killing aspects of it. Uh, you'll notice some of the things it's changed, but and you may want to turn them back on and you're obviously free to do that. Uh, but it just go ahead, goes ahead and tries to give you the optimal performance on your hardware, and it actually does a pretty good job doing it. So, uh, anyways, it didn't ruin your CFG file. When you click this button, go, oh no, it turned off my shadows and my light bloom. Obviously, it hasn't tinkered with your CFG file yet. It doesn't have access to your computer. So what it's done is it has created a brand new FSX config file for your system and you just go down here and click download and you would put it on your desktop or put it right into the FSX folder and replace your CFG with their config file. So uh, I would always recommend you back up your original just in case this glitched for some reason. Obviously nothing's perfect and that way you'd be able to go right back to stock without having to worst case reinstall FSX and all your add-ons. That's always a nightmare as I'm sure you guys know. Uh, I'm not in any way affiliated with these guys. I just ran across it Googling. Uh, so, But you can donate to them if you feel like it's improved your experience. Uh, I'm really impressed with the tool personally. So I am going to be finishing my uh, Citation X review shortly on the manual and the final thoughts on it with a final review. Uh, I have had my FSX rig down. I am rebuilding it currently with new components to do some more reviews etc it was just time to for an upgrade uh, going to sandy bridge and some other tweaks that i'm going to do with it to make it a little better fsx dedicated rig anyways uh, i hope you like this tweaking tool and i hope you f found this video extremely informative and i hope you keep watching thanks again